publish your static website in a cost-effective manner while still maintaining high availability and low latency? If so, Amazon S3 buckets are your answer. I'm Thomas with Branch Us Digital. I'm a full stack developer obsessed with learning. If you're interested in learning full stack development, please subscribe below to receive new content. In this AWS Rails tutorial, we're going to walk through how to use Amazon S3 buckets as a static website host. First, we're going to upload our content and assets into a newly created S3 bucket. Then I'm going to walk you through all the configuration required to turn that S3 bucket into a static website host. Finally, we're going to attach a nice clean URL, the one we purchased in our previous tutorial, awsrails.com. We're going to attach that through Route 53 to our newly created static website. So we can have a nice clean URL. It's very fast, very available, and extremely low cost, typically costing pennies per month. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, stick around for the tutorial. As a prerequisite to this tutorial, you're gonna need a static website to upload. In my case, I just grabbed a template from Bootstrap and uh, customized that to the AWS Rails tutorial series content, including a, an overall description and a couple of links and an embedded YouTube video for the first tutorial in the series where we buy the domain of our tutorials and kind of give, give me a, a demonstration website to work on uh, while, while walking through various tutorials. But I felt like the design aspect of this wasn't really important, so I didn't spend a lot of time there, so I'm just gonna time lapse through this really quickly. First, navigate to aws.amazon.com. Click sign into the console in the upper right-hand corner. Once signed in, we presented with the default page. Down in Find and Services, we're going to search for S3, click in. So the first thing you need to do is create your bucket if you don't have one already. Bucket names are unique across all of Amazon. To serve a static hosted website via S3, your bucket name must be identical to the domain name you'll be serving. In our case, it's going to be aws-rails.com. So you'll type your name, bucket name in. Then you can have the opportunity to change the region. In my case, I'm just gonna leave it as North Virginia. You're gonna to wanna to uncheck block all public access. The Amazon default is to block any access on the internet to all of your assets in your S3 buckets. So you're gonna turn this off because you want people to see this. You're, you're serving a static website here. So you want people to be able to reach this content. You have to acknowledge that you're doing this. Then you'll scroll down the bottom and click create. Now we're going to create our second bucket. So the one question you might want to know is why you need two buckets. So typically when hosting a static website, you're going to want both the naked domain, that is the domain without the www, and the domain with. Then you're going to redirect your secondary bucket to your primary bucket. So in our case, we want to use aws-rails.com without anything in front of it as our primary bucket. We'll create our second bucket with the www and then just forward this bucket to the first. Again, we'll leave it as the same region, uncheck block all access and click create bucket. Now that we have both of our buckets created, we're gonna upload our content for our static website into our primary bucket. So you're gonna click upload. Here's the content for our static site bucket. You just need an index page and an error page per Amazon convention. Um, and then I also have uh, assets here, a style sheet and uh, an image uh, within my uh, static website. Uh, so you want to make sure that you have the index and error page at the root level of your bucket. We'll grab all this, drop it in, and click Upload. Now we're going to turn our S3 bucket into a static site host. So you're going to go ahead and click Properties. And then here in the Properties, you can click Static Website Hosting. You'll click on that option and click Use this bucket as a static site host. Here you'll fill in your index and error templates. And then in our case, we're going to redirect the, the www version, so you can ignore that option for now. So once you've got your index and the error page, uh, your error documents filled in, 
click Save. Next, you're going to click on Permissions. Here you'll see that Block All Public Access option that we selected initially when creating our buckets. If you forgot to do that, you have an opportunity to change that here by clicking the Edit link, and you can turn that off. This will allow people to access the contents of our bucket so they can see our static website. Next, we need to set a bucket policy. So click Bucket Policy. In Amazon, policies follow a, a JSON format. And while it's good to understand that, you don't need to memorize it. So you can go ahead and click this documentation link in the bottom. Click Bucket Policy Examples. I'm granting read-only read permission to an anonymous user. Then you can copy this bucket policy. We're going to paste it in our policy. So we're not quite done yet. There's something we need to edit, but let's just walk through the policy really quickly. First here, the effect line is allow or deny. So in this case, we're gonna be allowing the actions below. The principle is, is who can complete this action. So an asterisk here is a wild card. So anyone can complete this. So an anonymous user in our case, anyone who happens to visit our website. The action is, that's an array containing key pairs. In this case, it's, the Amazon service name and the Amazon service action. You don't have to memorize these. There's lists of them available. So you continue to just chain them in there. Uh, if you had multiple actions you'd like to allow. Last is the resource. This is where we're gonna have to make our change. So the resource is an array of ARNs or Amazon resource names. In our case, you just need to change the ARN to the exact name of your S3 bucket. Make sure you leave the slash and the asterisk after so that anything within our bucket can be accessible to the public. Then you'll click save. This pops up a warning letting you know you're granting public access to this bucket. Amazon typically tries to be secured by default, so they just want to make sure that you actually do in fact want to have this bucket accessible publicly. So click save again. Next, we're going to go back to the Overview tab, and we'll click on the index page, and then click on the object URL. This serves as a nice error check. You can see that all of your images and assets are correctly linked, that your bucket is available, and importantly, that the properties and settings that we just changed are set correctly. So we know that this is publicly viewable because we're viewing this right now. Now we'll hop into Route 53 and hook this bucket up to the domain. Here you can see our record set for AWS-Rails. You're going to click Create Record Set. We're going to leave this blank so we can access the naked domain name here. Leave it on A Record and select Alias. Alias records are a way for Amazon to link to other services. In our case, it's going to be an S3 bucket. So here from the endpoints, you can select the S3 bucket as your target. Then click Create. This can sometimes take a few seconds or maybe a few minutes to propagate. So if you don't see your bucket at the endpoint right away, just wait a few minutes, refresh, clear your cache, and try again. Now you can see our clean URL working for our bucket. But what about the www version? Let's go set that up now. And this time we're going to open our secondary bucket, the, the one prepended with www. In this case, we don't need to upload any assets because this is just going to be a redirect bucket. This is going to redirect to the non-www version of our domain. So click Properties. Again, we're going to click Static Website Host. This time we're going to click Redirect Requests. In here, you're going to enter the name of the domain you'd like to redirect to, and then the protocol. If you would prefer to use the www version as your primary, then you just follow the beginning of this tutorial using that bucket, and then this would be your naked domain name bucket that you'd forward to www. Okay, so once complete, click Save. That's all we need to complete inside of S3 for this bucket to redirect. We just have one more step left in Route 53. We're going to create one more record set for our www CNAME. Again, this is going to be an alias record, and this time we're going to see our second bucket, www.aws-rails.com. Select that and then click Create. Then click to the front end, and we'll test that our redirect is functional. 
So you can see when entering the www domain, this just gets automatically redirected to our preferred version. Please remember to like and subscribe. This really helps out the channel and feel free to leave any questions or requests in the comment section below. I hope you're excited for this AWS Rails tutorial series. Um, we've got some really exciting things coming in the future. Um, we're just going to keep building this out by example. Um, and this, this domain will just continue to serve as like our playground uh, to, sh to showcase all the work that we're completing. I know all of the tutorials in this series have been AWS focused. We're going to get to the real stuff soon. Don't worry. We just have to do a little bit more setup to get to the point where we can. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next AWS Rails tutorial series video.